Hey, I'm back. Keynote Legends. All right, so we're going to create some Keynote Legends now. We've gone into a lot of the intricacies of placing Keynotes. We talked a bit about the Keynote uh, uh, text file. So let's get right into it, huh? Let's, uh, um, let's get into it. I'm going to um, recite ver verbatim, and uh, hopefully you'll follow along with the book or the book's companion website or some of the sample files, and you'll find that this is uh, right up your alley. All right, so creating keynote legends. Depending on your choice of keynote and your workflow, you might want to create a legend on each sheet for your notes. You might want only the keynotes that are shown on a given sheet to dynamically appear in the legend, or you might want to have one legend that will show all keynotes used throughout the project. These legends usually reside on the side of a sheet near the title block information and can take one of two forms. The first type is an all-inclusive and shows is all-inclusive and shows every note within the project. This style has the benefit of consistency between sheet sets, between sheets in the set. The same note will always be in the same location in the list. However, this type of list can become quite long for larger projects. The other type of keynote list includes only the notes that show up on a particular sheet. This has the advantage of supplying a list of notes customized for each sheet without extraneous information. Creating either list manually has traditionally been challenging. One of the benefits of Revit architecture is the ability to completely automate either list type, thus removing much of the chance for error in the process. Let's review how to create both types of lists. Creating a keynote legend is simple. Nothing is that simple. Every time they say simple, I'm going to tell you that no, it's not. Nothing in life is simple. <laughs> Creating a keynote legend is simple. Choose the legends. That's not true. Some people are simple. Creating a keynote legend is simple. Choose the legends button on the view tab and select keynote legend from the drop down list. Once you launch the command, name the keynote legend and then click OK. So, from the uh, View tab, right, Keynote Legend. Except that I don't want it on this sheet. Do I want it on this sheet? Uh, well, let me, hold on a second. Let me see what the book uh, kind of does. It doesn't really tell you. But I'm going to do, do it on the sheet. We have some keynotes here. So let's just follow along and see what the text uh, tells us to do. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Let me find my place. And you know me. It'll take me a second. Uh, it's simple. Once you launch the command, name the keynote legend and then click OK. Once you launch the command. All right, so you'll be presented with what looks like a typical scheduled dialog box called keynote legend properties. All right, so uh, it really doesn't tell us what to name it, so I guess we can keep this. Um, I guess we can just keep this called keynote legend 2, because um, I created one earlier. So I guess we'll call it keynote legend 2. Okay, and we'll get a dialog box that's similar to schedules. Uh, you'll be presented with what looks like a typical scheduled dialog box called Keynote Legend Properties. There are only two fields available in a Keynote Legend, and by default, they are both loaded into the Scheduled Fields side of the Fields tab. These fields are as follows. Now, what's really cool, and I really shouldn't get into it because you know me, uh, I've been professing not to go over on a tangent, but the embedded project data, the project information data, is something even better. Project information, okay, let me slow down. The keynote tags, oh, I mean, the only ones included are the two that you see that have been already pulled from the field selection into the scheduled fields, but the project information is something that you'll find to be very fascinating. And if anyone uh, has ever worked with AutoCAD and had a whole bunch of title blocks um, and they, somebody said to them, oh, you know what, this guy's working on it now, or this girl, or uh, you know, this changed, that changed, project number changed, project status changed, all of these things um, would have to be edited manually. And it's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous hemorrhage of cash. It's a ridiculous hemorrhaging of the company's cash. And if, if, if you're in that business of wasting your uh, stakeholders' money, then continue to do so. Um, I've seen folks, like I said, I'll say it again, I've seen folks come from Harvard and do it and go blow through until the company went belly up. Chapter 11, and everyone's shares were worthless. And uh, watch the SEC uh, drag them into the courthouse 
for SEC violations, for reinvesting the, 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 the employee's money into a worthless f f f company, 401 stock repurchase plan. <laughs> so again, this is not insurmountable. These people put their legs on one leg at a time, just like you, and in addition, some of them can't understand the simple, simple aspect of just knowing not to just waste. Waste, it's a simple, uh, it's a simple concept. You, you, if, you, if your job is to run a company efficiently, as a general manager or as a director of operations or, 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 or whatever level that you put in the upper echelons uh, to ensure to your stakeholders that you have their best interests in mind, and, and they're a bumbling idiot. They come, they come from most walks of life. And hopefully, um, they don't get a, 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 a golden parachute like some of them do after they bankrupt the company. Because the, the employees are the ones that are suffering. And anyway, I'm not going to get into that. I heard some complaints on the radio today about that. All right, shut up, Mike. You got to go. You, you'll be presented with what looks like a typical scheduled dialogue box. Um, and by the fault, there, um, these two fields available um, are already loaded into the scheduled fields side of the fields tab. These fields are as follows. Key value. Key value. This field contains the numeric value of the keynote. Keynote text. This field contains the test text description for the keynote. Excuse me. I'm out of soda in a while. And there it is. Pops up. Now, again, you can't zoom in. It's not like a view. It's a, like a spreadsheet. That's prepared to go on a view. And if you want, you have to go to the cell of the column that you want to expand and drag it over. And you'll see you get just that. And uh, I don't know why that's there. Or it could very well be that that's, we have to sort and group this. That it doesn't, it's not sorted and grouped. I can tell us by looking at it. I'm sure that's in the next section. Sorting and grouping. And sure enough, it's exactly the case. A keynote legend works like any other schedule as far as formatting and appearances go. By default, the sorting and grouping are already established because the key value is used to sort. The one special item of note is located on the filter tab. At the bottom of this tab is a feature unique to this type of schedule, a filter by sheet checkbox. So hold that thought. Um, what it didn't, now it goes into it after we created the uh, keynote legend. Um, and of course, I'm going to now have to go back and uh, see if I could uh, find how to edit it. So what I'm going to do is just go back into, uh, if you go to filter, you'll see filter by sheet, right? One unique element or one radio button checkbox, if you will, uh, is unique to the Keynote Legend properties. Filter by sheet checkbox. Selecting this box gives you the ability to filter the list specifically for each sheet set. Leaving the box deselected will supply a full list of the keynotes over the entire project. Now, think about this for a second, if you will. If you're working in an MEP environment and you have multiple disciplines in your project, you have uh, a uh, structural, well, but yeah. No, not, not structural. You have the, the, the plumbing, the mechanical, the uh, electrical, and mechanical piping. Could there be two different contractors for the mechanical, but ordinarily it's the same. In some cases, it's one MEP firm. But you have those four disciplines within the MEP firm, firm that is going to have different sheet sets. Right? You'll have the mechanical sheet set, the plumbing sheet set, the electrical sheet set, uh, sheet set, and then so maybe the telecommunications sheet set. And if you don't filter by sheet, then you're going to get a lot of keynotes, right? You're going to get a lot of keynotes. So um, let's just read that paragraph again, and let's just reiterate it. A keynote legend works like any of the other schedule as far as formatting and appearances go. By default, the sorting and grouping are already established because the key value is used to sort. Let's go to the sort for a second. Sort by key value. Ascending, right? The one special item of note is located on the filter tab at the bottom of this tab is a feature unique to this type of schedule, a filter by sheet checkbox. 
Now, what um, I'm not happy about is the fact that the uh, division is on the bottom, which is division zero, zero. I just want to see something. Uh, I'm not going to overthink that right this second, but um, this really, uh, if you think about it, it's the default, it's defaulting to the uh, procurement division zero, zero placeholder. Whereas I'm thinking that it should uh, be by uh, division. So my thought is that it should be sorted by division. Then again, we didn't program that into the uh, fields or the sorting and grouping. So I'm not going to get into that right now. Maybe the book will, but it, it doesn't right now. But just make note of that. Uh, be cognizant of that. All right, like any other legend, a type of legend, a keynote legend can be placed on sheets again and again within the project. You are not limited to only one instance of the legend on a sheet, as you are with other ty view types. Additionally, if you choose the keynote legend that filters by sheet, it will dynamically modify uh, the note list uh, based on individual sheet contents. As views are added or removed from a sheet or notes are added to the project, the keynote legend updates accordingly. Keynote legends are considered to be another type of legend view and will appear under the legends node of the project browser. So, as you can see, it'll uh, it's considered a legend under the keynote legends. I have another one here. Um, this keynote legend one. It's, it's actually, um, hold on. Yeah, I made one before the, the exercise. All right, so, um, and this is a, uh, uh, a note for BIM managers. A schedule for keynotes. Creating a schedule for keynotes is a great way to find single-use notes and typos in a project. If you are working on a project team, there is always a chance that someone could be inserting an incorrect keynote into the project. And guys like me that rush, you better watch me. I'm probably the guy that's going to be the one committing that one. Uh, I may mean, make this mistake, uh, and everyone does. All right, so scheduling the notes in an efficient approach to managing the annotation process uh, and gives you the tools to verify consistency. Scheduling keynotes allows you to do three things. One, list all the notes within a project and verify their spelling and accuracy. Two, find odd or off, one-off instances. Sometimes this can mean the note was accidentally placed in lieu of another note. Three, make sure all the keynotes in the project are represented in the specifications. Cross-reference, right? Specs are broken up by division. Right? And that's where you're going to be uh, seeing all your, uh, that's where you're going to be pulling your submittals. That's where you're going to have to submit by division. That's a project manager's job. But think about the ramifications of that statement. If, if, if that's all the project manager does is provide submittals, guess what? And how they do it, right? Think about it. And how they provide those submittals. You know, they do it lots of different ways. Getting them emailed from the vendor. All right. Um, unless, of course, you're the type of project manager that just does aging reports. And chases the money. <laughs>